the ability to say what you have you have to say. And God, I pray it's just not information, but it's transformation. God, help us to catch a vision for what it means to go love together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up one more time for Chris. And let me tell you, it is a privilege to get to be here today. So when Corey asked if, if I would be willing to come and speak, I was like, yes, no hesitation, no thought. I have been praying for, our church has been giving to, Carolina Movement has been praying for, giving to Sojourn for the last several years because we believe in what you're doing. And let me tell you, man, over the last few years, Corey has truly become a friend of mine. And he is the real deal. I, I don't know if you guys know just how blessed you are to have Corey as your pastor. And I'm telling you, he loves Jesus and he loves you. Now, I, I want to share some of my heart with you this morning. Now, I, now I love multiple things. I, I also really love Jesus and I really love my wife and, and I really love our three kids. But let me tell you two other things that I really love. First, I really love the state of North Carolina. I grew up in Reedsville, North Carolina. There we go, born and raised. One of the few from Raleigh who is actually from here. And so, uh, born and raised in Reedsville. We would go to Greensboro to watch a movie, go on a date. I, I went to college at NC State in Raleigh, went to seminary in Wake Forest. I married a girl from the wrong side of the tracks in Chapel Hill. Yeah, her parents live in Pittsburgh. Her, her brother-in-law and sister-in-law, uh, my brother-in-law, her brother, uh, lives in North Raleigh. Uh, so my, she graduated from UNC Charlotte. Got a UNC Charlotte beat from there. And so last, yesterday we came and hung out at Concord Mills and she like showed me her stomping ground, and the apartment she used to live in, right behind Concord Mills. You know, I grew up going through the mountains in Boone, going through the beach in Wilmington. The second thing I love is the local church. Amen. I love the local church. It is the body of Christ. It is the bride of Christ. It is the hope of the world. It is God's plan A to help every man, woman, and child have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love the local church. Part of why I love Sojo so much. Part of, part of why I love it means that 8.6 million people in North Carolina right now are doing something other than worshiping our King, our King Jesus. And I say something's got to change. In fact, number two, church attendance in America is declining. Every single major study shows that church attendance in America has declined dramatically over the last 50 years in every single state in the continental U.S. The American Church in Crisis says that every single state has experienced a decrease in church attendance. Number three, there are fewer churches per person than ever before. Did you know that in 1900, there were 27 churches for every 10,000 people? In 1950, there were 17 churches for every 10,000 people. And by 1996, there were only 11 churches for every 10,000 people thousand people. And, and what's worse, as, as the number of churches continue to shrink, our population in North Carolina is exploding. Number four, existing churches are less effective than ever before. Not only do we have less churches, but the churches we do have are becoming less effective. In 1950, the average church of 100 people saw five and a half people baptized. Every single over half of churches in North Carolina saw zero baptisms. Zero. North Carolina, I'm not even talking about America. North Carolina, 2019, half of churches saw zero people come to faith in Jesus Christ. And I've heard it for 2020 that most churches have seen half. Half the number of baptisms they saw in 2019. So let me just sum it up. Less than 18% of people in America go to church. Church attendance is declining. There are fewer churches, and the churches we have are less effective at reaching people for Jesus than ever before. Guys, this is not my opinion. These are the facts. This is the state of the church in North Carolina. And my prayer is that for you and for all of our churches that this is a wake-up call. 
that this is a wake-up call that something has to change. Which brings us to an important question. Jesus says this in, in, in Matthew 16, 18. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, so how do we understand the state of the church in North Carolina in relation to the words of Jesus, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? Is Jesus being unfaithful to his promise or is something else going on? Well, let's zoom out. See, I think one of the problems for the American church is the American church thinks that we're the center of the universe. The reality is if you zoom out to the global church, guess what, guys? Jesus is building his church. The church of Jesus Christ is exploding all around the world. Africa, Asia, South America. I mean, it is. We're seeing people come to Jesus in unprecedented numbers. In the Middle East, people are having dreams of Jesus. The fastest growing churches in the world are actually in the Middle East right now. You know that Afghanistan is one of the fastest growing churches. Guys, God is on the move. It's estimated by 2050 there will be 3 billion Christians in the world. Guys, that's billion with a B. That's a lot of people praising my King Jesus. Amen. And that makes me excited. So the question is, what's going on in America? What's going on in America that, that the church is not on the increase, the church is not taking ground, the church is losing ground. Something is wrong, something is broken. And my prayer is that this morning as we examine the words of our King Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to see some things that we need fixing, so some heart surgery I think that needs to happen in our churches so that we can see Jesus build his church, not just in Africa or in Asia or in South America or in the Middle East, but right here in Concord, right here in North Carolina, where we call home. So let us pray and let us listen to the words of our King and let's do whatever we need to do to correct and get back on course to point people to Jesus. Can we do that? All right, come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are a good, good God. You're a good father who loves to give good gifts to his children. And we, as your children, cry out to you this morning. God, we ask you for wisdom. We ask for your Holy Spirit to, to reveal to us through the words of your son, Jesus. God, what do we need to change? Father, we're ready to repent. We're ready to turn. We're ready to change. We're ready to do anything short of sin, to reach people far from God with the gospel, the life-changing, everlasting, life-giving message of Jesus. God, would you break our heart for what breaks yours? And would you build your church in Concord and North Carolina and around the world until we see your king, your son, Jesus, coming on the clouds? And we say, yes, come, Lord Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so now we're going to look at some, some statements of Jesus, okay? And, and we're going to look at, at three great statements of Jesus. And we're going to spend some time on the first two, but we're going to really camp out in the third one. These are the, the greatest words of the greatest teacher of all time. So, so I, I, think, I think you're in for a treat, not because I'm a great speaker, but because Jesus is a great Savior. All right, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples of all, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I, Jesus himself, I am with you always to the very end end of the age. Are these the last words of, of Jesus to his disciples before he ascends into heaven? This is the mission of the church. This is the mission of your church. This is the mission of my church. We don't get to, to make it up. This is what King Jesus has given us. However, unfortunately, many churches over time have what I call mission drift. We drift from this great commission to go make disciples of all nations and we replace them with other, usually good missions, but missions that are not going, making disciples, baptizing them, and teaching them to obey everything that our King Jesus has commanded us. See, church, if, if we are going to reach people, we're going to see Jesus build his church in North Carolina, we must go. It's not an option. 
It is a commission. It is the mission that our king has given us. See, the biblical reality is this. The church does not have a mission. The mission has a church. Mm. Did you know that, that Jesus gave the mission before he gave the church? The church is meant to serve the mission. The mission is not meant to serve the church. I think that you could argue that, that if we lose our mission, that we lose the right to call ourselves a church at all. We, we might as well just change it to Sojo Country Club. <laughs> if we lose the mission, we lose the right to call ourselves a church. So the first thing I want you to know this morning is that if we're going to be the church of Jesus, then we must go. Now we're going to do some participation. Are you ready? Everyone say, we must go. We, we must, must go. go. That was good. That was strong right out of the gate. All right. Now let's look at the second great statement of Jesus. It is called the Great Commandment. We've got the Great Commission. And the great commandment, Mark chapter 12, verse 28, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one answered Jesus is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Notice they didn't ask him for a second. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Amen. This is the great commandment to love. Love. Jesus calls us to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. I don't know if you guys have realized recently, but we do a great job at loving ourselves. So Jesus is like, look. I'm going to take the one thing you really know how to love, and that's how much you're supposed to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Here's what I've seen as I've gotten to, to interact with sister church all across North Carolina. We are really, really good at loving God, praising God, giving to God, declaring His greatness, and we are typically really bad at loving our neighbor. We're really good at coming and singing songs to God, but when we leave and we pull into our garage with our fenced-in backyard and, and we retreat into our hideaway and, and we hope that nobody ever comes knocking on the door, we get the ring doorbell, right, to make sure, like, oh, that's the neighbor hide, but then we're not home. Guys, we cannot love God if we do not love our neighbor. They're so intertwined. If we're not loving our neighbor, then we don't understand the love of God. Right? right? We, I love what you say, Corey. When you got up here, you're not worthy. I am not worthy either. I am a sinner saved by grace. And I have to share the forgiveness I have received with others. Or else I don't understand what God has done for me. We have to love. Here's my prayer. My prayer for Sojo Church is that if you would say, hey, we're going we're gonna to move to the next town over. We, we found a better piece of property and a better building. And, and so we're going to move from Concord to the next town that the people in Concord would have a riot. They would say, no, you cannot leave. You, you love us so much. Like, we don't know what we would do if it wasn't for Sojo and our community. Oh, man. See, I believe when, when we go and... We don't just go in, in word, we go in action, we go in deed. We, we love not just with words, but with tangible actions that our community will see the love of God in us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Everybody say, we must love. We must love. love. We must love. We must go and we must love. But there's one final great statement of Jesus that I think has been the great omission of the church here in America. And it's found in Jesus' teaching in John 17. John 17 has become one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. It, it has the longest prayer of Jesus in Scripture. So if you want to know the heart of Jesus, read John 17. He, he prays. He prays for himself. He prays for his disciples. Then he wraps up it's the only place in the scriptures that I know of, and I've read it a few times. The only place in the scriptures where he prays for us directly. Listen to what he says. John chapter 17, starting at verse 20. Jesus prays, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. 
That, that's you and me. That's so joke, okay? That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. You want to, want to know why? Maybe, just maybe, all of Concord doesn't know about Jesus Christ. All of North Carolina doesn't know about Jesus Christ. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Would, would you honestly say that the church in Concord has been brought to complete unity? Would you honestly say the church in North Carolina has been brought to complete unity? No. Would you say the church in America has been brought to complete unity? No. See, the reality is I think that the church in America and North Carolina is known more for our division than our unity. We have splintered into a thousand different factions. I remember growing up as a kid thinking that Christians in other denominations weren't really Christians and they were probably going to hell. Because they didn't believe exactly the way that I believe. They believed in the same Savior, the same, the same Jesus, the same Trinity, the same Bible. But because they didn't believe exactly the way that I believed. I thought that I was better than them. I thought they were going to hell and I thought we shouldn't have anything to do with it. That could not be further from the heart of Jesus. That they may be brought to complete Unity. This passage has been called the great collaboration. It is the heart of Jesus Christ for his church, for his bride. That's why he calls it the church, not the churches. He said, I will build my church, singular. We are all part of the church of Jesus, local expressions, local bodies. But we are part of one church, and I think we have forgotten that. And if we want to see revival come, if we want to see our communities reach with the good news of Jesus Christ, it must change. If we're going to be the church of Jesus, then we must work together. Everybody said, we must work together. We, we must, must work, work together. together. We must work together. We must be for each other, not against each other. We cannot view other churches as competition. And, and let me tell you, that this is what I feel like we've, we've grown into. Well, they're not our competition. You know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna pray for them over there. We're gonna you do your thing, I'm gonna do my thing. You know, different churches for different people. You know, like I'm gonna read from people you're not gonna read from. You're gonna read from people I'm not gonna read. So God bless you, guys. It is not enough to work beside one another. We must work with one another. We must lock arms and do ministry together. It is, it is not enough to just go to our separate corners and our communities. We must work together. That they may be brought to complete unity. Then, everybody say then. Then. then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you loved me. See, when we go, when we love, and when we do it together, people will see Jesus in us. You have that picture? We have three circles. I believe this is the center of God's will for the church, that we would go. This is not a country club. We are a, we are a church with a cause, right? We are a community with a cause. We must go. We must love. We cannot just tell them about Jesus. We must show them Jesus with our actions, and we must do it together. Gone are the days when everybody in America was a Christian and we were just trying to be the best church, the best option that they would choose. The reality is there are thousands of people in Concord who are not going to any church. We're not in competition. We need every church and we need more churches. We need more churches in Cabarrus County. We need more churches in North Carolina. There's not competition. We couldn't even hold them all if they showed up. We must 
work together. We must go, we must love, we must do it together. Now, what would that look like? Well, that's one of the reasons that, that I love Carolina Movement. That's, that's one of the reasons that uh, Point Church has said, hey, you can devote 10% of your time, you can tithe your time as the pastor of our church to helping and working with other churches. Because I believe we have to figure out how to work together for the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. And, and I believe that by God's grace, that, that we together at Carolina Movement, we, we've seen God do something special. Check this out. Check this video out. Planting churches is a sacrifice. But the reality is there's never enough money, there's never enough people, there's never enough time. But I believe we're sacrificing it for something that's great. You know, we believe that church planting is the most effective method of evangelism. And so I would rather sacrifice a little bit here in order to do something great there. And I believe that if we continue to do that over and over again, that it's less about my kingdom and it's more about his kingdom. And there is no limit to what we can see God do in North Carolina. My friend Mike Pittman and I started praying and really seeking God's face about this church planting thing. We were invited to a network gathering of churches in Raleigh, which is where we met Chris Hankins, who was the lead pastor of the Point Church. And it was there that we realized real quickly that he shared a lot of our DNA. His desire was to be a part of a church planting movement. I mean, we just hit it off. And we both just had a white hot passion to be church planting churches. We were kind of coming in sideways with this and didn't know a whole lot about church planting. Through Mike and Vertical Church, we were able to meet Chris Hankins from Point Church in Raleigh. And those two churches really kind of gathered around us, trained us in what intentional church planting was all about, supported us financially, supported us with equipment, in just so many ways that they made this possible for us. But within about nine months, we were already planning another church. We had multiple churches investing in us to help get us started. And then so what motivates that is you have faith. You have faith that God is God and He's called you to it. He'll make things happen. He'll provide the money. He'll provide the people. He'll provide the location. He'll open doors and help get open. So we've always wanted to find a very specific avenue to invest in church planting in North Carolina. So through Mike, he put us in touch with Pastor Billy. We've been invested in for the past couple of years and are excited about the journey they're on right now. So I felt the Lord calling me into church planting after a 20 year term in traditional ministry. And so I uh, started out with Vertical Church and it was from there that Mike introduced me to the rest of the tribe that we uh, began to get support from other churches in the area. I feel like I'm, I'm incredibly blessed to have Wink Church oh, as yeah. <laughs> Crossroads Church, which is right outside of Whitefield, which was a church that had just started I was less than 12 months old. Being a church plant that's so small and, and just a baby to be able to give resources to us is, is a blessing in more ways than any person can count. And so we want to be a part of helping others to plant because other people have helped us. I couldn't plant a plant by the own church. You're going back to start a new work. Paul said that he can do exceedingly abundantly more than the actual thing. I can think about some big things. And I believe in Union County, North Carolina, the Lord wants to continue to allow this mission to spread to the ends of the earth. Our mission statement as a church is to reach people near and far. My plan is to keep the DNA and the blueprint that's been laid out before me. The idea is just to launch a healthy church and have the mindset to, from the beginning, identify church planning so we can begin to continue to reproduce God's church. It's exciting to see these seven generations of churches that have been planted in a relatively short amount of time. It, it gives me great joy, but it also gives me great hope because I truly believe we're just getting started. Hear that? Amen. We're just getting started. Amen. We're just getting started. This fall, we're planting our 12th and 13th Carolina Movement churches, and we are just getting 
started. Our prayer is that in 10 years we would see 100 new churches like Sojo planted across this great state of North Carolina. And, and, and our prayer is that every church, even the existing churches, every church will become a church planting church through going and loving together. We do something called church planting coalitions where we help churches come together to plant churches to do together what they could never do on their own. Tim Keller says it this way, the only way to increase the number of Christians in a city is to plant thousands of new churches. Well, there's no way to plant thousands of new churches, much less hundreds of new churches, unless we do it together. You see, every one of our church plants made it through COVID, made it through the pandemic. Just like you guys, you're in elementary school, you're homeless, you're in a gravel parking lot, and now you're here in this amazing new facility. And not only because of the grace of God, one of the graces of God was that you were partnered together with churches right. That's right. who believed yep. in what you're doing, who said, yes, we're going to do this together, and who gave and helped and came alongside, and now you guys are getting to do that for other churches. You see, when we do it together, when difficult times come, we can stand and not fall. The, the Ecclesiastes, the, love, the way it says is that two are better than one. Two are better than one. When we do it together, we don't get taken out when tough times come. We can hold one another up. You see, that is the heart of Carolina movement, that we would go, that we would love, and we would do it together. Every church can't plant a church on their own. But every church can plant a church if we do it together. And that's why we were so excited for Corey to come on as our new executive, executive director of Carolina Movement. Because I believe in Corey, and Corey believes in going and loving together. And, and he's seen that. I love, and I just wanted just to celebrate what you're doing. And a lot of times we don't know when God is doing something special at our church because we don't get to see other churches every week. Let me tell you what you have done here at Sojo Church by raising up and sending out Quintel and raising up and sending out uh, Daniel. Guys, that is, you're breathing rare air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are very few, I mean, you're in the like 0.1% of churches that are raising up church planting from within and sending them out to plant new churches in your community. God is doing a great work here at Sojo. And I believe that our King Jesus is unbelievably proud. I believe that, that this church, when you get to heaven and you see Jesus, he's going to say well done, my good and faithful servant. Man, I just want you to know what man, this is an amazing church that Jesus is using in amazing ways. And, and sometimes it takes somebody from the outside to, to really let you know that what is happening here is a special thing. What God is doing here is a special thing. You're seeing people come to Christ. You're not the church that has seen zero people baptized in the last year. By the grace of God, you are seeing even today, right? Even today, you are seeing people place their faith in Jesus and be baptized. And that's why I'm excited that, that just to give a real life example that's happening right now, Sojo is taking the lead on one of our church planning coalitions with Grace City Church. Did you know that not only is Sojo Church helping Grace City Church plant but Potter's Hand Church in Apex, North Carolina, Hope Church in Tabor City, Crossroads Church in Whiteville, Multiply Church in Monroe, and Point Four Bragg in Fayetteville. All six churches are coming together as a sending church coalition to help plant Daniel and Grace City in Concord, North Carolina. You see, we are better what? Together. together. Better together. Better together together. Six churches coming together. Now, that's great for Sojo. And, and, and we are a body. A lot of times in America, we're so individualistic that we just take everything and apply it to us. We don't think how it applies to us as a body. But I do want to take a second and say, what does it look like for you as an individual to go? What does it look like for you to love your neighbors? What does it look like for you to do it together? At Point Church, one of the things that, that we say is, who's your one? 
who's your one. Our goal is that, hey, you can't reach everybody for Jesus, but you can you can reach one person for Jesus. And so, yeah. so who's your one? And, and for me, my one is my neighbor, Ryan. We, we moved into our, our, our new home about a year ago and moved into a new neighborhood. And our neighbor right, right next to us, Ryan and Gina, uh, they've got a little, little boy named Asher. He's three. <laughs> Uh, and so we've gotten to know them, and Ryan's my one, and I'm praying for Ryan. I'm going for Ryan, and my, my goal is I'm, I'm, I'm praying, God, let me see Ryan come to know Jesus Christ. Let him have the freedom in Christ that I have. Let him have the hope in Jesus that I have. And, and another thing that we do to help us love our neighbors is we do something called bless, which, which is our way of how do we, how do we bless people? And, and it stands for begin with prayer, listen. Eat, serve, and share the story of Jesus. And so I've been blessing Ryan over the last year. One of the ways we've been blessing recently, I've taken up golf. <laughs> my, my, my personal goal for 2021 is to not be terrible at golf. That's my, my personal goal. I'm working on it. Take golf lessons. Go golf class for your golf class. Class. Yeah. <laughs> And so I started inviting Ryan you know, to come play golf with me. And now almost every Friday, Ryan, come plays golf, and we'll, we'll eat together in the clubhouse and, and hang out and talk about what's going on. I'm praying for him. And, and, but the cool thing is not only am I getting the chance to bless him by inviting him to play golf with me, I'm also getting to introduce him to a lot of other super cool guys who go to our church who really love Jesus and who are now really loving him. And this, I mean, this is fresh. We're talking about two days ago, on Friday, at Knights Play Golf Course in Apex, North Carolina, me and Ryan and a guy named Blake were talking uh, right after we played. We, we you know, drove the golf course right up behind our, our cars. We're all three kind of parked right in the same place. And now Blake just came to Christ three months ago and was baptized. Yeah. I mean, he's going through a messy divorce. I mean, yeah. he's, he's in a rough spot. Yeah. And Jesus Christ reached down and picked him up. And he has given his life to Christ. He's filled with hope and joy because of Jesus. Even though he's still in the in the storm, right? He's raising a hallelujah. And he has hope. And, and he's, he's so excited about what God is doing in his life and our church family that when we were riding back on the car, he was like, hey, have you invited Ryan to church yet? And I was like, well, like, he knows, you know, he knows I'm Pastor Point Church. And, like, you know, we've talked about church a lot, but I haven't invited him. I don't want to pressure him. He was like, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll play dumb. And I'll invite him. I'm like, yeah, do that. And so at the end, he's like, hey, man, you got a point? It's kind of a lie, I guess. But um, I don't know. But he was like, no. And he was like, well, dude, you should come check it out. And he's like, well, I'm not really a, a, you know, a church person. He was like, well, neither was I three months ago. God has changed my life. Amen. And so he invited him and. So and then I'm greeting the Sunday, and, and the conversation started with, I'm not really a church guy, too. Well, you never know. You might see me on Sunday. <laughs> he did. I, amen. Praise God. And, and here's my point, is that Blake did what I couldn't do. Blake was able to say some things that I couldn't say as his neighbor who's a lead pastor at Point Church. Because Blake had a different story than me. Yeah. Blake is, is in a mess that Jesus is pulling him out of. He's recently come and given his life to Christ. He's able to, I mean, I've always been a church guy, right? My, my mom drug me to church when I was a kid. But Blake was able to give a different testimony, a different story that, that resonated with Ryan. Yeah. And, and Ryan's able to see that, guess what? We're a church of normal people Amen. who love an extraordinary God, and God is changing our lives. Yeah. Amen. So who is your one? Who are you going to? How are you loving them? How are you loving your neighbors? And how are we doing it together? Man, I believe the best method of evangelism is a group of Christians who really love each other. Because when we really love each other, who doesn't want that? Yeah. Every single one of my neighbors wants to be loved. Yeah. Every single one of my neighbors wants to have friends. Every single one of my neighbors wants people who care about them. And guess what? You've got that right here. That's right. Let's go. Let's love. Let's do it together. Can we do that? I believe when we do that, we will see a great revival in Concord, in North Carolina, in America, and around the world. I want to close by praying the prayer of Jesus over you. 
John 17. I pray also for all those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Heavenly Father, would you make those words a reality in our midst? Would you bring us together to go and to love as one in complete unity so that Concord, Cabarrus County, North Carolina would know that you are the Savior of the world and you can save them. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 How many of you guys like pie? It's all flat for pie, so maybe we go golf and, and go have some pie later. What Chris is asking us to do is to go, to love people, and to do it together. Amen? And it's really not Chris, it's the Christ in Chris. Right? He's asking us to go. He's asking us to love. And he's asking us to do it together. I don't know any person that doesn't want love. I don't know any person that doesn't want acceptance. And we have the ability to go. We have the ability to love. And we have the ability to do it together. Amen? Amen? Amen. Can we clap for that? We have the ability to do it. The problem is we're doing it with the wrong slice of the pie. You see, the reason why we don't know that, like, really, there's 18% of people that go to church. Everybody that I know goes to church. <laughs> we're going after the wrong slice of the pie. We're, we're all focused on that like, little slice of pie while the other 82% is ready. They're ripe, and they just need somebody to go. They need somebody to love, and they need somebody that will to do it together. That's why we planted this church, because I walked into a church as a lost individual that looks so different from everybody else. I wore tight jeans. I mean, I, no, I didn't wear tight. I wear tight jeans today, but I wore baggy <laughs> jeans and they wore tight jeans. I had a dragon shirt on. They had Wranglers on. They had these big belt buckles on. I didn't know what a belt buckle was, but they loved me and they did it together. And it was the one thing that drugs could never give me. The one thing that all these ladies I was chasing after could never give me. The one thing that trying to be popular could never give me. I was looking for love and I was looking for acceptance in the local church. Gave it to me, and so I've dedicated my life to the local church because of what it gave to me, what Jesus has given to me. And I'm asking you, do you believe Jesus? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Do you believe Jesus? Yes or no? Yes. His command is to go today, to love today, and do it together. And if you're saying yes to that, will you stand to your feet as we sing? This incredible song about what it does when we go and we love together. It turns graves into garden. It turns right. sickness into dancing. It turns all these things from one thing to another. And that's what our God does. That's what our glorious gospel does. So I'm asking us to make a declaration, not just with our words, but with our heart, that we'll go, that we'll love, and we'll do it together. Amen? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. Thank you for Chris blessing this house today. Thank you for him challenging us. And it's not him, but it's the God in him. That Christ lives in him. And God, Christ lives in us. That's why we're not dead anymore. That's why we have salvation. That's why we have hope. And we want to give that hope away. And God, we get to see a physical demonstration of that hope in just a few moments through baptism. Of somebody going under the water, being dead, and then coming back to life. Just like you did on the cross, in the grave. In the empty tomb that is our hope that what gives us strength to go to love and do it together God I pray that you would use our church to not just fill our church but to plant other churches I pray for Eric and vertical church in Gastonia that we're getting ready to send out in the next few months I pray God that you would allow us to plant hundreds and thousands of churches across this great state through our church and through Carolina movement and I pray for us as individuals to knock on our neighbor's door and say hey I love you and just walk away just freak them out say I love you <laughs> but to go to love to do it together let's sing this morning graves into gardens Are you all excited about backing today? Yeah. yeah. Raised in the gardens, new life can be made by raising out of that water. That's what this song talks about. Being made with new life so you can go and be disciples. Let's see.
Better than
Here's the objective today to pick up a backpack. It is our goal to stuff 75 backpacks. And you guys know I'm a teacher. This is near and dear to my heart. Each one of those backpacks has a school supply list in a small front pocket. Fill that backpack up and bring it back with you so that way we can bless our schools all around um, Sojo. Um, and for the start of this school year. So you guys are amazing. We're so glad that you were here with us today. Go out, be those hands and feet this week. Love your neighbor. Have a wonderful day.